do it. There are 1.3 billion Muslims in this world. They're not going to let us do it. It's already the, widening. The borders are, are porous. We can't do it. Well, that didn't convince him. He said, well, I think we can do it. I said, oh, well, suppose, suppose your son was one of those six killed in Iraq uh, last week. And you know what? He looked at me like it had never occurred to him. And it wouldn't have occurred to him because it wouldn't be his son, you know. It would be the sons from the farms. It would be the sons from the cities. And so he said, well, I don't buy that either. So I'm trying to, well, well, maybe I'll try a moral argument on him. I said, uh, well, do you, are you one of those that uh, likes to have the uh, Ten Commandments brought into the schoolhouses and the courtrooms of this? He said, oh, that's a great idea. I said, well, you know, if memory serves, there's one that says, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's oil. I mean goods. Uh, don't bear false witness. There's one. Don't fear everyone. There's one that says you shouldn't steal. And there's also one against killing, if I remember correctly. So maybe you want to subtract four and bring in the six commandments into the schoolhouses and the courtrooms of this world. Get real, I said. This is a moral issue. We shouldn't be going around killing unarmed civilians and, and causing more violence where violence is endemic. And what did he say? He turned on his heel, marched out to his SUV, prayed for cheap gasoline, and drove home. I want the oil. Let's educate them, bring them into democracy and take their oil. Apparently somebody took too much yellow acid I, and, uh, and got you know, the story wrong. The majority of the construction, and the vast majority, like I'd say 90% of the construction that I saw wasn't with the Iraqis, it was with the American bases when they were building. Con concrete structures, incredibly permanent, uh, designed to house thousands of soldiers for a long period of time. The American people are being kept in the dark about all this. If it weren't for shows like yours and for a few others and the internet, uh, people would never have a chance to learn the, the truth of this. What Cindy Sheehan has done is brought a, a human dimension to this. I said, look, people are getting killed, including my son. A lot of Iraqis are getting killed. Uh, why don't we face up to whether this war makes any sense at all? Do we really want to have uh, our young people sacrificed for, for, for what? We don't know. We don't know what's going on. And to tell you the truth, my kids don't know with the things that are involved in the decisions I make at my house. And that doesn't mean that they need to be involved in the, in the decisions because I know better than they know it's because I'm more informed. And I'll give him that same benefit. You know, we did elect him. Where have we lost our freedom? All across the... Where? They're using Homeland Security against topless bars. They're using Homeland Security against toy store owners. They're using Homeland Security against pot dealers. And that's wrong. They're using Homeland Security, quote, against gang members. It's admitted. Are you familiar that the Gulf of Tonkin never happened? LBJ tapes have not been released. We went to war. Well, you know, I just got to point out to Wolfowitz and Pearl and Feith and um, Abrams and uh, Wormsers, you know, people like that, who, who this has been their, their plan and it's, it's about, you know, it's about imperialism, it's about abusing a nation's natural resources, it's about, it's about greed and power and it's nothing about keeping America safe or freedom and democracy for the Iraqi people. I believe uh, that America right from the start of the Bush administration uh, has been fixed, has been focused uh, on the use of American military power in order to extend control by America of strategic areas in the world. Now we have the, the Downing Street minutes which show that as early as July 23, 2002, uh, the head of British intelligence just back from Washington said to his prime minister, it's a done deal. The decision for war is inevitable. The war will be, quote, justified by the conjunction of terrorism and weapons of mass destruction, and intelligence and facts would be fixed around the policy of war. There's the proof that the intelligence, all this justification in, in quotes for the war, was a fraud, a fraud from day one. The project for a new American century, the think tank, uh, with the report called Strengthening America's Defenses. This is frankly a demand for full spectrum dominance by the United States. I think the most chilling aspect of the Project for a New American Century document is this kind of transformation uh, of our foreign policy, this kind of strengthening of America's uh, defenses is 
uh, a revolutionary change and is not going to come uh, it's not going to happen at all quickly absent a new catalyst of massive proportions for example a new pearl harbor In Crawford, Texas, we found individuals who believed the weapons of mass destruction were found in Iraq. Uh, no weapons of mass destruction were found. Are you kidding me? Do you buy that? Yes. Of course there were mass. Of course there were. David, uh, there were, there were, there were, there were. Nin, 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 yeah. This guy would make a great citizen in George Arwell's fictitious 1984. If we took them all away, does that still mean that if if he had the capability, would he still see that's that's in the mind? Well, first of all, she's got an ad on TV that said so he's he lying. lied. Well, my son died. You know, he lied about to what? Nobody. What did what did George Bush lie about? He uh, said he was going to protect weapons this of country. Mass huh? that well, weapons of mass destruction. That weapons of mass destruction was out of our backyards. He never said they weren't going to be nobody killed. That's war. I think they're saying that Bush lied about WMDs, not about troops were going to die. But, uh, but did he though? But did he though? Those, those, those weapons were there. The authoritarian powers of the state, which are available to, uh, to government, is very dangerous. And I think we live in a state, uh, we live in states, both the United States and the UK, where the, the powers to question, uh, to call in evidence, uh, to demand explanation, to hold to account those who are in control are gradually systematically being weakened. This is very dangerous in a democracy. Oh, Now, Dick Cheney and John Bolton and others have been saying Iran poses an immediate danger. They could get a nuclear weapon before we know it. All the same things they said about Iraq. And so we have to do something about that now. You know, he said the same thing about Iraq. And it, like you said, he was caught red-handed. It's proven to be lies. Why should we believe him about Iran? I'm pleased to tell you, American people, that the National Intelligence Estimate just put out on Iran says that Iran cannot possibly have a nuclear weapon for 10 more years. Let me say that one more time. Iran can't be a nuclear power, weapons-wise, for 10 more years. We have to look at whether our governments are creating enemies um, so that they can justify what they do. Of course, two of the biggest funders of American presidential campaigns are the oil industry and the arms industry. And it's in their interests that we invade places like Iraq. We're we going to let the Israelis, or we're we going to do it ourselves, attack the nuclear facilities in Iran. Now, people say, that's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. I agree. The problem is, folks, the people running our policy toward Iraq and Iran were widely known in the 1980s when I was briefing the vice president and others as the crazies, okay? The crazy. You come in on, on Monday morning and somebody would say, guess what the crazies did late Friday night? And you'd know who exactly who the reference was. It was to Wolfowitz, it was to Pearl. So all the fo same folks, some of them who have d deserted the sinking ship like proverbial rats, okay? But it was Fife, Wolfowitz, and the rest of them. They were the crazies. There's a, there's a lot of other people that are uh, have a dis dissenting uh, opinion about this war and uh, been, has, has another view of this war other than Cindy Sheehan. And other people have lost sons in, uh, in this war and daughters. She needs to really go home and, you know, uh, do, do this little uh, protest some other way besides trying to make things sound like she's the only uh, voice of America. Three weeks later, this gentleman and many others got their wish. Free speech was banned for hundreds of square miles around Bush's Crawford Ranch. Now you can only protest on private property or designated free speech zones where no one can even see your protest. Look, tourist stuff's popped up now. Let freedom ring. <laughs> we decided to cap off our day in Crawford by traveling down the public highway to where the Secret Service had blocked off the public road two miles before the entrance to Bush's ranch. We were promptly told, as if America is now a third world police state, to get out of there, despite the fact we were credentialed press.